Hey, I want to uh, congratulate you for joining us with the webinar and uh, the course tonight. Uh, I'm Dr. Bruner. The, uh, tonight we're going to be going over stress. And so today, hopefully, we're starting to move back to, a, to more of a normal life. But right now, with everything that's been going on with this pandemic, the, there's just so much uncertainty stress and uh and you know, just complete anxiety uh, about the time so i just thought that this particular topic was just was just too important uh where we had to get good quality information out there and so that that's what this is going to be i want this to be good quality do level information for you for you to use to help protect your health and to help your family in, in this time in this extremely stressful time the uh well, it's anytime you you Google there. There's just so much information, and a lot of it's terrible information. And it's it's really it gets really confusing and hard to tell what's good quality information. And that's what we want. Well, we want to be a good source for you and a good source of information. So uh, when I started putting this presentation together, and uh, I hope that uh, you, you can hear my passion, my voice for this particular topic, because uh, everyone's experienced stress. This, uh, this is something that everybody has experienced at some point in their life. And stress can have a huge, huge negative effect on our health. Uh, and, and we all know this, and that stress can affect our, our quality of life all the way down to our uh, performance, job, our uh, relationships. Uh, it, it has such a big, huge effect on our life. So that's the reason why when I started putting this together, the last thing I want, I know that you're busy, you know, you got family, you've got, uh, you've got all kinds of stuff going on right now. So the last thing I want is for this to just be too much, just this really long course and just too much information, just information dump. At the same time too, I started putting this together and there's a lot of just really important stuff that I just did not want to leave out. I, I would be doing a disservice if I left a lot of information out. So what I've done is we've broken up this up into a three-part series. So I want to uh, want to invite you to join us for all of it because all of because uh, every part is going to be uh, it's going to be super uh, super important and it's going to build up to the the final we're kind of putting it all together so if uh, so if you don't follow through the for, through the whole thing you're going to be missing a, a lot of the pieces out of this but uh, just some really important uh, housekeeping notes uh the this this workshop's intended for for educational purposes this isn't me giving you medical advice uh, particular to you we don't necessarily have a doctor patient relationship this doesn't and this doesn't replace your doctor and your uh, your doctor and patient relationship so uh we're going to be giving you uh, uh we're going to be giving you advice but this does not substitute you and your doctor so the things that we're going to be covering in this course we're going to be going over the types of stress. People, when they think of stress, just typically think of emotional stress, but there's actually types of stress, and each one can affect our bodies in different ways. We're going to be talking about uh, how this affects our overall health, <laughs> because we, uh, we all uh, heard the adage, stress yourself sick, and uh, so we're, we're going to be talking about how it affects us. We're going to be talking about how stress affects our hormones, and yes, stress does affect our hormones, and we have stress hormones as well. And we're going to be talking about how it affects our nervous system. Nervous system, we're getting into more of the emotional, neuro-emotional component. We're going to be going into that. And we're going to go super deep into it. This isn't, this isn't meant to be this crazy, scientific, boring lecture. Uh, we, we just need a basic understanding uh, so that we know you've got to understand it before we, uh, before we can combat it. That's what this is about. Uh, stress also affects us and our ability to lose weight. I know that's, uh, and, and we, we all want tips on how to lose that, but uh, stress also affects our ability to lose weight. And we're going to, at the end, we're going to be wrapping up with real world strategies so that you can own this thing called stress. But, uh, but well, where I want to start, and uh, with this first module, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be understanding stress more. We're going to be sticking with more, uh, more what is stress, what's the types of stress, and how, to, how is it negatively affecting us is uh, what we're going to be going over. But stress has been linked with uh, lots of things that are detrimental to our health. This isn't, a, this, isn't a income, uh, this isn't a total list. This is just a small little snippet of uh, the way that stress affects us. It, 
leads to cardiovascular disease, increased risk of cardiovascular disease, depression, fatigue, decreased immune function, uh, uh, where it can cause insomnia, weight gain, hormone dysregulation, decreased short-term memory. Uh, I mean, and this, and this is just a small list of the ways that stress can negatively affect us. But as a chiropractor, uh, the original belief and philosophy of chiropractic was that, that our, our body can be negatively affected in three different ways. And so what they broke it down into was we can have thoughts, talks, and toxins. We call that the, the three T's. And so really just kind of simplifying that even more on negative stresses that affect our life, we have our emotional and that's typically what people think of when they think of stress. We have our chemical and we have our physical stress. And so that kind of breaks it down even further with those three T's. And so uh, in our brain, uh, whenever we see something uh, deep down inside, and uh, we call this the primitive brain, it was the oldest part of the brain that, uh, that typically you see in all animals that uh, that, that it's more the, uh, just primitive and, and simple. It's just automatic. We have the amygdala. And what the amygdala does is it's really involved in the keeping you alive, uh, the, the keep you alive response. And so you see something scary. And so he sees this jack-o'-lantern down here. And so your eyes are going to perceive it. And you're going to activate neurons in your, your eyes. And so the visual tracks going to fire all the way back to the visual centers. And so then that's going to come down and uh, to this part called the amygdala, which is your primitive processing. And our amygdala is really good at remembering things like the visual shapes and like faces. It's really good at remembering faces. And the reason why it's so good at remembering faces is because if I walk up and I punch you in the face, next time you see me and you see me coming, you're going to have a, you're going to have a stress response because I might hit you in the face again. It's really important to remember that person that just attacked you. The problem is, is this system can get so wound up. It's if we're in this constant fight or flight, fight or flight mo model, meaning we're going to fight it or we're going to get away from it. If uh, we're in this constant state of state of panic, it's just like learning to play the piano. We're firing these receptors over and over, and our body gets really efficient at this system. Is what happens, <laughs> and so. Well, what can happen is in our hypothalamus is a uh, different part of our brain. It's a little bit deeper. It's, it's kind of a master control unit. And so it's going to release a series of hormones, uh, CRH and then uh, ACTH for, uh, from the pituitary. So the hypothalamus is going to stimulate the pituitary, which is going to in turn stimulate the adrenals. And so what, that, what that's going to cause is for your adrenals to release a, uh, a stress hormone called cortisol. And, uh, and that's how our brain, it's called the hypoth uh, hypothalamic pituitary axis or HPA axis. That's how it, our brain, uh, is able to control our response hormonally. And so our adrenal glands are these little glands that sit on top of our kidney. And in the cortex out here, uh, that's where we're going to release uh, a stress hormone called, uh, called cortisol. And down in the medulla, we're going to release things like epinephrine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, or in other words, just your pure adrenaline. So what can happen is we're, when we're stuck in this constant state of fight or flight, it, it's kind of like this bear comes out of the woods. So you're going to have one or two things you have to do with fight or flight. You're going to fight it or you're going to run away from it. And so... This is, you need this, uh, the re this response or you're going to get eaten. And so uh, just like this bear out right here, this guy, this guy's frightened. He's flipping into the, this response, <clears throat> which is really healthy, especially when you really need it. The problem though, is through our life, through a uh, stressful life, work, paying a mortgage, all this stuff, we stay in this and that's where it's totally unhealthy. Uh, it's kind of like if you had this car, so what's going to happen to your car if you go home tonight, you take this brick, you leave the motor on, you, uh, you don't turn the motor off, and you put the brick on the accelerator, and, uh, and you just let that motor go all night. It's going to burn it out, right? It's going to burn the motor up. Well, that's exactly what happens to this, uh, to this system, is it's just going, going, going all the time, and it, uh, it eventually just burns it up and gives it out. So some signs of this uh, system being overtaxed 
is uh, high cortisol can lead to belly fat. Uh, brain fog, what I mean by brain fog is just like fuzzy thinking, uh, just uh, not feeling good. I uh, can't really recall memory, uh, feeling kind of tired and fatigued, memory loss or chronic fatigue. Slow starter in the morning is a really big sign. But the biggest one is wake up, uh, wake up before the alarm go goes off with the, with the inability to go back to sleep. And so we're going to, uh, here in a second, we're going to come back to that one. But that's, that's a big red flag whenever patients start, uh, start telling me that in my, in my practice. So we can test cortisol uh, well, with lab testing. And so uh, cortisol works on what we call the circadian rhythm, meaning that it's highest in the morning, it's lowest in the afternoon. And so this green zone right here is the zone that a healthy cortisol should be in. And so this right here is actually, they're having too much cortisol in the morning and you can see it kind of dipping down in the afternoon. But when we test it, we want it to stay right here in this green zone. And so elevated cortisol, and you see how high this cortisol is right here. This person's, the, this person's stressed out. They're stuck in that revved up fight or flight response all the time that bear's always chasing them. And so what they've started finding out that high plasma cortisol has been associated with some really nasty side effects on, uh, on our, uh, on our nerve, uh, neurological health. And so they found that after two years, they had a rapid decline in our, middle, uh, in our mental status exam scores. And so PTSD, these people went through constant, really high rates of stress. And so our hippocampus is the part of our brain that stores our memory. Uh, Alzheimer's is a uh, neurodegenerative disease that actually affects the hippocampus, is uh, the part of the brain that Alzheimer's affects. And so you can see with this PTSD brain, versus this normal brain. This normal brain, you can see how all of this is, uh, these holes right here are a lot smaller. All, all this is big and plump in the middle. And you see how you can see that, you can look and see the degeneration right there. And so uh, they're starting to find that, that, stre that uncontrolled cortisol does have a negative effect on our, uh, on our brain health and can actually start leading to some degeneration of our brain. And so talking about that, uh, that circadian rhythm or that that uh, horm hormone change, we uh, on the opposite end of cortisol we have melatonin, and so melatonin should be the highest at night because uh, and people people are really aware of melatonin. Melatonin is really well known, and people supplement it so they can go to sleep. Uh, it's actually it's actually serotonin actually is converted to melatonin melatonin in our brain, and so the. Uh, well, what what should happen in a nor in a normal hormonal dance is the red one's melatonin. It should be highest at highest at night because that's what helps you go to sleep. Cortisol should be at its lowest, and so cortisol is a stress hormone, but it also helps raise blood sugar. And so your body uses that. Insulin's going to lower blood sugar. Cortisol does the opposite. It raises it. A lot of that is. Whenever you're in a fight or flight mode, you're gonna need more blood sugar to be able to run away and you're gonna use more energy. So uh, what should happen at night when you're sleeping, you're not eating. So when you're not eating, you're in this fasting state. And so what'll naturally happen is cortisol starts to raise. When cortisol raises, it helps, <laughs> it helps keep your blood sugar uh, at a normal level. So whenever, uh, when cortisol is going up, it's because uh, we're not eating, we can't afford for our blood sugar to get too low. You can't survive like that. So your blood sugar is going to come up with the cortisol. Well, if cortisol is in the gutter because we've completely blown out this system. Now your body has to go to step two to try to get this blood sugar back up. So it's going to release pure adrenaline. So this brings us back to that other bullet point that I showed you about how when they tell me, uh, people tell me they have to wake up around 4 or 5 a.m., have to pee, it's usually they have to pee, and then they, uh, but they lay in bed wide awake, exhausted, can't go back to sleep, uh, and then about the time that they're normally supposed to get, be able to get, uh, or supposed to get up, that's about the time they're able to start going to sleep, but now the alarm goes off. Now we're exhausted, we're not getting sleep, and so then now we get up and what do we have to do? because our cortisol is in the gutter. Now cortisol should be highest in the morning right here at uh, 
right here at 6 a.m. It should be going up because cortisol helps us get up in the morning. Well, now if your cortisol is in the gutter, we don't have cortisol to help us. So what do we do? We have to drink our coffee. We have to drink our caffeine, our energy drinks, because what is that? So that's a stimulant. So that's going to help us raise our cortisol back up is what that's going to help us do. And so these people typically are having to rely on multiple cups of coffee just to get going. And so uh, what, what happens is uh, usually I, I ask them that and uh, they're like, no, 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 no. I woke up because I had to pee. And so uh, uh, where, where it's different is if you just woke up because you had a full bladder and you had to pee, you could just pee and go back to sleep. But the fact that you, can't, you cannot go back to sleep is because you have pure adrenaline now trying to keep that blood sugar up. But now you have this really, really strong fight or flight. And I've had some patients that I've worked with that uh, they've had such a big response that, I mean, they almost woke up with a racing heart because uh, they had to release so much. And so that's, uh, uh, that's one of the big telltale signs that we're having some of this hormone dysregulation with the cortisol is that they, they wake up before the alarm goes off and cannot go back to sleep and they're exhausted slow starter in the morning. And so when we test cortisol, and we can test it two different ways, we can test it with uh, using blood or uh, we can do salivary. So my personal preference, I prefer doing a salivary test for multiple reasons. The first reason is because I personally don't like needles. So if you come at me with a needle, I'm probably gonna get a stress response. The second reason is because we have to remember when we do a blood test, it's what that cortisol level was at that particular time where you've got the blood drawn and you got it tested. So if you go first thing in the morning, it's how high it was first thing in the morning. We have no idea what it was later that afternoon. Uh, or if you go in the afternoon, it's what it was in the afternoon. We have no idea how, how it was in the morning. The only way you can get the entire circadian rhythm profile is if you went first thing in the morning, you had your blood drawn multiple times during the day, but no one's gonna do that. So uh, what we can do is the lab will send a kit to you and you, uh, you just collect your saliva, just spit in the tube, put it back in the kit, send it back to the lab, and we're able to get that entire circadian rhythm profile. And so if this is the healthy circadian rhythm, uh, what it should be right there, and this is what the patient's actually experiencing, you see how it's diving down. So if we went first thing in the morning to, uh, to lab corp request or whichever lab we used, got our blood drawn, it would show normal. But the person doesn't feel normal. They, uh, they feel terrible in the afternoon. Their cortisol's tanking at, at noon. That they feel, uh, and that person's probably going to have a crash. They're probably going to be relying on caffeine, Starbucks, something in the, something around noon to get that energy back up. They, they feel terrible. But if we're able to test that entire circadian rhythm, we tested it at noon, 6 p.m. Now we can see, aha, now it's really low. We can get extremely specific on what we do to start, uh, to start changing this and start turning this problem around. And so one of the biggest things that, uh, that I always uh, want to uh, get across is, uh, what is your why? And uh, the reason why I bring this up, my, my why and what I do, and the reason why I want to take care of my health and be able to perform at my, the highest capacity that I can is my wife. Uh, she's, uh, she relies on me. And if we are, if our health is failing because of this stress, and then we're losing our health, we're not able to perform at our, highest, uh, at our highest standard that we can. We're not able to be there emotionally. We're not able to be there, uh, be there physically. It affects our ability and it takes away not just our quality of life, but it takes away our family members' quality of life. And so that's the reason why, another reason why I'm so proud of you that, uh, that you're just taking the time out of your day to, to learn about this and to learn, how to learn how to be healthier, not just for you, but your family. And that's the reason why this is so important to me because I wanna give you, through this course, I wanna give you good quality things that you can do in order to help improve not just your quality of life, but, uh, but those people that are around you. And so your homework for today, uh, I want you to go and, so it's called a TED Talk, if you're not aware of it, but, TED Talk, yeah, you have this expert and they do a 15 minute lecture, usually at a university and they present their, uh, their work. And so this is a great one. And it's just uh, kind of a way to look at stress. And, uh, and uh, I can't take credit for what I'm about to say about a few of this, because a lot of it does come out of this talk, but I'm, it's only 15 minutes, but it's, it's great stuff. And so 
Uh, this one's how to make stress your friend. And so uh, one of the things that people, uh, people have trouble with is they're looking at, should I take this really stressful job? I, I love it, but it's really stressful. Or, you know, should I avoid that? And should I get this, this job that's a lot less stressful? And so uh, one of the biggest things she says in there is we, we need to fill up, to have a fulfilled life. Uh, we need to, we need to chase meaning over just avoiding discomfort. If that job is going to be really stressful, but that is what's going to give you meaning, uh, that's far more important for your emotional health than, than to, uh, to, uh, to try to avoid the stress that, that you would have in that. And the second thing too is stress is not necessarily a bad thing. It's when stress is uncontrolled is the, is whenever it gets a, uh, becomes a problem. Stress, stress can actually make us a better performer. If you're going to do a sporting event, if you're going to do a lecture in front of a group of people, if you're going to teach a class, if you're going to do things that you, uh, are things that require a high level of uh, high level of concentration, getting that fluttering heart, those butterflies in your stomach, you have to think about my heart's beating faster because it's pumping more blood to my brain, it's pump, pumping more blood to my body. Uh, I'm going to be breathing deeper as I'm oxygenating my brain. This, this stress response actually makes you a higher performer. So we can't just always look at stress as this big demon, but what we've got to do is we've got to understand the types of stress so that we can eliminate as many types as we can. We can build our health up as high as we can, because I always tell my patients, your health is like a bank account. You're, uh, if we have this big, healthy bank account, we can, we can afford some stress events. We can afford to do some things that, that will uh, do a withdrawal. It's just whenever we haven't, ta we haven't built up the other sides of our, of our health, that's where uh, stress can just be overwhelming and, and tank it. So the, that's what we have to cover for module one. So uh, we're gonna be releasing module two. Uh, I want you to come back and check out module two. In the module two, we're gonna be going a lot deeper into the emotional side and the neurological side. And we're gonna be talking about technology that we can use to help monitor it and some things that you can do to, to help control that aspect. So uh, well, once again, I wanna invite you to check, out, check us out on module two. Yeah. <laughs>